There is a new Microsoft application in town and it's called Microsoft Loop. Is Microsoft Loop going to be a game changer for your business or is it just another application to worry about? We'll find out in today's video. But before we start, quick introduction. My name is Jonathan Edwards from Integral IT. We help businesses all over the world with their IT support, their cyber security, and their Microsoft 365. So what is Microsoft Loop? Well, if you've heard of applications like Notion or Evernote, Microsoft Loop is similar. These applications are really blank canvases for your business and they're designed to help you get more done as a team. Now the benefit of using Microsoft Loop over something like Notion or Evernote is Microsoft Loop is firmly in the Microsoft 365 ecosystem. So if you're a Microsoft 365 user, Microsoft Loop doesn't cost you anything. Plus, everything integrates really well. So if you're using email, Teams, SharePoint for your files, everything integrates into Microsoft Loop. Now, the downside of using Microsoft Loop over something like Notion is, well, it's not quite as good. Notion is quite a mature product. Microsoft Loop is new. But as with anything with Microsoft, Microsoft will get there. They'll release a product, they'll get feedback, and they'll keep improving it. They've got billions of pounds in budget in order to get the very best out of their applications. But at the moment, it's not as good as things like Notion. Now, I'm about to jump onto the computer behind me to take a deep dive into how Microsoft Loop works. But before I do that, I know a lot of people who want to start using Microsoft Loop and who have tried to do so. And when they log into Loop, they get a message a little bit like this. Now, in order for your organization to use Loop, you've got to turn it on in the back end. And I've created a video on my YouTube channel about how to turn Microsoft Loop on in 365. I will put a link to that video below. So, without further ado, let's jump onto the computer behind me and let's have a look at Microsoft Loop. So this is the Microsoft Loop login page. You simply browse to loop.microsoft.com. To sign in, you simply click on sign in. It's as simple as that. It's going to ask you for your Microsoft 365 credentials. So I'll enter that. I'll also enter my magic code for 2FA. And then you get signed into Microsoft Loop. Now you can see at the moment, it looks a little bit sparse. All I've done at the moment is create a test workspace, which is over here. Now we'll go through the rest in a moment. There's just one setting that I want to show you to start with. The three little dots here, if you go to click on there and go to settings, you can see I've got mine in light mode. You can choose if you want to have it in dark mode and it's just a little bit easier on the, on the eyes. But for the rest of this tutorial, we are gonna use the light mode so I can just show you things in a bit more detail. Secondly, obviously I've logged into Loop over a web browser. If you want to, you can install the Microsoft Loop application on your computer. And to do that, if you just go up to the top bar here, you can see this little icon, click on there and click on install Microsoft Loop. And again, I've now got Microsoft Loop installed as an application on my computer. What I can do if I want is just go to Loop here. You can see it's installed. I can right click and I can pin it to the taskbar just so that Loop is in here. So you can use it in those two ways. If you want the application on your computer, you can. And that's how I'm gonna show you Loop for the rest of this tutorial. Now Microsoft Loop is all about something called workspaces. You can see I've created a workspace here called Test. Now your question to me at this moment might be, what is a workspace? Well, a workspace can be anything you want it to be. A workspace might be a specific department within your business, say for marketing or finance. A workspace might be a project that you're doing at any one time. I suppose it's just a collection of information that you want to keep together. Once you create a workspace, they will all be listed here. So to create a workspace, you simply click on this little plus icon here. I've got one here called Test. And once you've created the workspaces, you've got a few options as well. You can open it, you can add it to your favorites. So it will appear in here. If you've got lots and lots of workspaces, that might be convenient. And you can rename it and style it. So I can update the cover here. Lots of different covers you can have click on update. I can rename it if I want to, or I can give it a little icon as well if I want. So I can give it a little smiley face or anything like that. Click on update. 
and you can see that those changes have taken effect. Now to create a brand new workspace, I simply go up here and I get this box here. Again, I can update the cover at this point or not. It's up to you, it's up to you. Give it a title, we'll call this marketing department as per my example. Uh, what can we put in here? We could put sales and see what happens. Uh, give it that, just a random thing. And then obviously we can invite other team members into this workspace. I'm not gonna do that at the moment, but I'll click on continue. Now there's another screen pop up here and it's saying, let Loop get you started. What this is, is a feature called Jumpstart. Now what Jumpstart is doing is scanning through all our data in Microsoft 365, and it's suggesting data that we might want to include in our workspace based on the title. Now, this is all powered by AI. Now, I'm not gonna do anything with this, but it is a nice little feature. So I'm gonna go off and click on Create. And you can see that my new workspace has been created. Now we're in our new workspace, we've got the option now of creating various pages and a new page has been created when we open the workspace and at the moment it hasn't got a name. You can see it's down the left hand side as untitled. Now if I called this something like social media, because this is our marketing department workspace after all, you can see that that page updates here now. Now it says here, just start typing. And I'm gonna show you how that works in a moment. But down the bottom of the screen, you can see that Microsoft have built some templates. So if we click on explore templates, it's gonna show us lots of different templates that are pre-built into Microsoft Loop that might give us a bit of a head start. So the one highlight at the minute is called Project Brief. And all we simply do, if we quite fancy this, this template is click Use This Template. And you can see all the details from that template have now been loaded into our page. And you can just use them and you can change anything you want about them to your heart's content. To create another page, you simply go to this plus icon here and you click on new page. And I'll just finally cover the templates just to show you a few more. You can click on explore. We've got things like project planning, where it gives you a project planning template. You might have meeting notes. You might have product wikis that I think are handy in business uh, to show people how to do the jobs and things. You might have an issue tracker. You've got lots of different templates that you might want to use. But you don't have to use a template, and I find that I don't use templates much. You might just want to create your own page. So to do that, we can give the page a title, we'll call it SEO, just to keep with the, the marketing theme. If you want as well, you can add icons which appear here, just to make it a little bit more user-friendly. I know kind of a, a face like this isn't very SEO-like, but it's just an example. And we can add a cover as well. So these just make the pages look a little bit prettier. Now what you can see here is that it just says, just start typing. So if we click onto here, now another option appears. We can press this to insert or that to find. So let's first just press this key on the keyboard. And what happens is we get a lot of options. So we've got some general options. We can add different headings. So this could be a title, it could be a subtitle, it could be a, a subtitle still. So I can click on a heading and backlinks, let's call this as, a, as an example as well. We can talk about this is a test and then we can click on this key again and we can add another heading, how to get backlinks. Again, all examples. More text here. down again and if we wanted we could have another one also we can add things like as you can see we can put tables into our page so click on there and you've got a table you can rename these columns so this could be whatever it could be test one you can rename those what you can also do is click on this arrow here and we can change the column type. Now you can have different column types. You can have text, which it's set to at the moment. You can change it into a date. You can change it into a person, or you can change it into a label. So if I change this, for example, to a date, if I now click on here, this changes into a date column. So I can rename all these. I can do anything you would expect to do within a table. Now you've probably all seen tables before, so I'm not showing you anything new. You can also insert columns to the right, columns to the left, etc., etc. So what else can you do? So if I just tab out of here, click on, on this again, you've got checklists, which are quite handy. So do this first, do this second, 
Again, it's a checklist, you know how they work. Click on here again, you've got bulleted lists, number lists, or we might want to put a divider in just to separate the content. So what you're starting to see now, it is really a blank canvas. You can use loop, you can use the workspaces, you can use the pages, however you want to use them. Just something else to show you, we'll press this again. I like these templates in here. So there's three templates here. There's a task list, which is quite nice. So what that does, you can, it's like almost like a little to-do list for your department. So it might be do this first. We're gonna assign that to Jonathan. There we go. We've got a due date on there, which is the 27th. And you can build out tasks. So the task list, that's a bit of a mouthful. The task list template is a useful feature. The other useful one, I think, is a progress tracker. Again, you might want to write a little list of a project you're doing, work area, assignee, you can add different labels, end dates, you can add different blockers on there. So these templates are really useful to use. Something else to show you as well is, is kind of the collaboration. You can see at the top of this page, there's a picture of me, and that means I am editing this. Perhaps you've got multiple people within your business editing the same page. So what would happen is everybody would appear at the top of here, but at the moment it's just me. And what you can do to further collaborate, you can see here, look, there's some speech marks there. We can click on there, some speech marks there. You can actually collaborate on these different things. So I could click on here, I could like it, I could love it, or I could say something like, you know, this doesn't work for me. And that would be a comment. And then people can go in and reply to those comments. So you can collaborate on the pages with various different comments. And if you ever want to keep track of any kind of notifications, any comments, there's a little bell up here, look, and there will be all the notifications. You can see that I've not got any at all in there, but that's where you'd find them, okay? So something else I want to show you is a big feature of Loop, and it's called a Loop Component. So what is a Loop Component? We can see I've got my page here. Now I can look at any of these areas. So let's have a look at this one here, this, this work area here. If we just click into it here, you can see that there's six dots here. If I click on there, you can see I've got an option to create a loop component. And if I click on there, a little magic kind of square appears around here. Now I can do something like this. Can you all please add your thoughts into the table? And I can then simply copy this loop component. I'll then get a link which I can copy and it says people in Integral IT can edit this link. So what does that do? Well, what it does, it enables you to put this loop component into various different things. You can put it into an email, you can put it into a Teams message, you can put it into a Word document. So if I just look at an email, click on here, if I just control and V, click on got it, you can see that this component is now been embedded into this email. So I could I could email this out and someone could simply put, uh, this is the first thing to do. This is the first thing to do. They might amend that. And if I go back to loop, you can see that that has been updated because it's kind of real time is the, is the loop component. So loop components are quite handy. So what else can I show you? Well, there's a couple of things. As with anything like this, you want to know about kind of backup and if someone comes in and makes a mistake and things. If you go to these three little dots at the, at the top here, there is a version history. So you can go in and you can restore back if anybody comes in and does something you don't want to do. At the top left hand corner as well, there's a couple of things here. These are just recent pages that you've accessed. And you've got something called ideas. So what are ideas? Well, what ideas are, you just click on this little button here and it creates a new idea. So you could think something like ideas for blog posts, perhaps you might call it that. And then you might type lots of different things. So I suppose what's the difference? If I just go back to here, you can see the ideas thing, ideas for blog post. What's the difference between an idea and something that you'd have on a page? 
I suppose it's just we all have kind of lots of thoughts and lots of ideas and sometimes we've not really got a storage place to put all those things. We might not want to formalize that idea into something like a, a workspace or a page. We might just need an area for our ideas to sit on and this is a nice place to do it. So I quite like that feature. So you can add all your ideas into there and when you're ready you can then build them into workspaces or different pages. So that in a nutshell is Microsoft Loop. So there you have it. There's a basic overview of Microsoft Loop. As I said at the outset of this video, I don't think it's quite as good as Notion. It's not quite as mature. But if you're using Microsoft 365, it's a free application and it integrates with your other Microsoft 365 applications. I look forward to seeing you again soon.